Hey, Bo. Come here. Come here, Bo. And here comes Bo. A little B-roll for my video that you're about to watch or that you have started. I don't know. i got to patch this in. I have to apologize for some of the confusion in a couple of sections of the video. I'm going to try to patch that and edit it. My editing skills are not very good. <laughs> you know, I can take videos, but editing is a skill that is difficult. I got a, a couple of phone calls during the time that I was that I was trying to record this this video, and I had to cut it in a couple of different places, and I lost my train of thought. So I'm not quite as stupid as maybe those section would, sections would imply. I hope you can uh, forgive me for that, but I wanted, I thought the video was going really well and I was expressing myself, and I'm a one-take shot on this, on, on these videos, and I'm going to start talking and I'm going to run the thing through and I'm not going to sit there and go back and try to edit the thing like Steven frickin' Spielberg. So hopefully you enjoy the video and have a great time and pick it up wherever I left off with the thing, and uh, we'll say goodbye to Bo. Bo, where'd you go? Bo! Bo! The bow. There he is, the bow dog. Hi, Peter Rose, Long Way Currency Trading. Uh, the video this morning that I'd like to do has to do with uh, my own rethinking of the process of whether to stage out of a position or not. And I've been pretty rigid in my thoughts in the past that staging out. Uh, was as like a, a lot of the talking heads say, oh, well, you stage out of a position, you don't get paid for your loss. This is a, a, a shout out to my friend uh, Langers from the UK, and um, he's the scruffy trader, if you want to check him out. He's on Facebook as well as doing videos. And um, Langers, thanks a lot for uh, your recent video, Why I Stack and Scale Forex Trades. Um, I've sort of... Uh, I see what you're saying, and it's the cleanest, I think, uh, discussion um, addressing that particular issue that I've seen, and I've sort of changed my thinking on that to the extent that I wanted to do a video, I'm going to do a blog post on this, and there'll be references at the end of this video to uh, Langer's site, to uh, my blog post, and, and some of the other videos that I've done. Because this all comes down to position management. I think in the, um, although my statements have been don't stage out of a position, uh, I do talk extensively about position management. And when that position starts to deteriorate or stop its momentum or, or whatever, and I'm a scientist sort of, I've got a degree in physics and I've been a, a computer software engineer for 33 years. Um, so I tend to be uh, very analytical in, in, in how I approach looking at things and, and also describing them. And in science, you, you don't say, well, you know, you, this uh, cannonball might have such and such a trajectory. Um, you know, it's got a velocity and it's uh, fired at a certain angle and the parabolic arc that it forms is, that's what it's going to be. It isn't maybe, you know, that kind of thing. So <laughs> my position has been, um, you don't scale out. Now, I've done a tremendous amount of computer simulation analysis based on scaling in. And I'm still going to hold to that. I'm not a fan of that um, unless you're a long-term trader. And again, a lot of the stuff uh, that I do is based on the shorter time frames. I'm simply not interested in taking a 50 pip risk to make a 100 pip profit. I, I, the markets are so um, dynamic that it doesn't take too many of those going the wrong way for those longer terms to... Uh, bring your account balance down considerably. And yes, you can, and I don't compound, but you can constantly reduce your risk by reducing the number of lots that you trade or your position size. You don't have to go in whole lots. You can go in, in, in increments of many lots or whatever. Um, but my training, I mean, I, I, I didn't have a, a, a mentor to guide me. I relied on 
um, the folks that have gone before me, books and educational resources. I, I took courses, and I, as I've said, I've done literally hundreds of videos and, and hundreds of books that I've read, all these books that you see behind me on the bookshelf. Those are all trading books or finance books. Um, I trusted that that information was correct, and it is correct, but you can't implement it as a beginner because it, it lacks reference to what Curtis Faith, one of the original turtle traders, um, Richard Dennis's group, uh, says, you trade on the facts, you trade on mechanics, but there's also that instinct that you develop over your experience. And then there comes that mystical other thing that we refer to as gut. That's what Gary, I mean, uh, what um, Curtis Faith calls it, trading on your gut. He wrote a book about that. And um, that's something that books and, and videos and, and all that stuff don't bring across. And if you're an educator or if you're taking this for on, a, on, a, for on a course, even a live course, they don't dare talk about this stuff because how do you question somebody on the instinct? And a lot of the people that are teaching I became very successful and they don't want to mess around teaching fucking courses and stuff so they send out people that they've taught to teach the course and it's a it's a watering down process from the source of the person that's really good look I, I I've been involved in karate and the martial arts and been teaching karate for 50 years so I understand that watering down process and how difficult it is to convey to many people a carbon copy of you so that they can go and take the time and carbon copy themselves. I can probably do that in, in that front line, but it takes a special person to be able to replicate that downline in order to be able to teach that. And, and quite frankly, you're paying $2,000 for a course to learn what a PIP is and how to draw a trend line and the London Open and all this other shit that moving averages that you can learn um, you can learn on your own. Why are you paying somebody to teach you that? It doesn't make any sense. But I didn't know that when I started um, because my background is as a real estate investor. And so you have time on your side. You do something stupid and you go, oh, that's, that's really stupid. Well, first of all, it doesn't hurt you right away. And second of all, it gives you time in order to do some research and find out what the mechanics are of dealing with it. You know, um, I did an enormous amount of study before I started buying real estate. And right after I, I purchased my first property, I went out and got my salesman's real estate license. And then I went ahead and got my broker's real estate license. Not because I wanted to um, sell real estate to, you know, commercially to other people, buy houses and stuff. But I wanted to know what the guy on the other side of the fence knew about real estate, the broker. They don't know shit. They just know how to sell, basically, is what their, is what their uh, issue is. So, um, I'm going to shut this off for a minute. Sorry, phone went off there. Um, I was talking about real estate and the time that, you, that you've got involved in real estate in order to make, make a mistake or to recognize a problem. And I went through, got a broker's license. So I knew what the guy on the other side of the fence did. I wanted to know what the bankers were doing and how they financed things. So I got my bro mortgage broker's license. So I did all this study in the real estate and, and, and you can do that in the real estate. Um, because when you screw something up, you can always turn to your right and say, what do I need to do here? And the guy will say, well, you know, do your tenants all have leases? And, you know, here's a guy to call because somebody peed on the floor. You can take care of stuff like that. But when you're, when you're looking to learn um, currency trading, it's a book or it's a course or it's a video. And the guys that are teaching this stuff are just teaching basic mechanics. Because it takes a special kind of person to be able to bridge that gap and show you how to do. Who gives a shit what to do? You can learn what to do in in, in 15, 15 days, two weeks. 
by reading a book and learning some mechanics and getting on a simulated account, you can learn that. And um, some of the videos are pretty good about getting you started on how to place your trades and all that, but there's more to it. It's there's that instinct and that gut, as I mentioned, that, that Curtis Faith talks about. And I think the staging in and staging out, those have to do with that rather than to be mechanical in their orientation. And so because I did my computer analysis on the staging in process, and there was no combination, and I was using uh, a six lot stage, you could have a six mini lot stage, or a six a full lot stage, whatever. But I did all the permutations of that. Uh, stage in one, bring in another one, bring in two more, bring in three more. Start with three, bring in another one, bring in another one. I did up, upside down pyramid, pyramid. I, I did intermix all kinds of staging in processes and nothing, and, and, and just one final close out at the end, um, and, and, and nothing from a return on risk basis beat going all in and coming all out. So well, that's how I built my, my, my structure, my, my, my thought process on that. And nobody out there really addressed the staging out thing efficiently. You know, I, um, um, I took a, a, a course from a, a really well-known uh, trader and um, just a wonderful course. I, it was a terrific guy. And I remember uh, his, his constant comment was to pull a third of your position size off at a certain point uh, because it never hurts to ring the bell, never hurts to take a profit. And my analysis had been, no, it does hurt because of two things. Number one, you're not getting paid for the full risk of the position that you put on when you do that. And number two is that you don't get paid out all the money that you should get paid out if you got to the profit target. But the way that Langers presents it, you know, changes the way that I think about it because it's, 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 uh, um, you take a little bit off so that you get paid for that position and then you let, they let the rest of them ride under certain conditions and there's a management rules that he goes by and I've done that myself when I was trading multiple lots. Um, I guess there's there's two differences that we really need to talk about. I mean, I I tend to trade, or I say I trade as a scalper, and I'll, I'll probably do another video on exactly what what I mean by scalping because I'm certainly not scalping for two and three pips at a pop. My profit targets that I'm that I, I won't go into a trade unless there's at least 25 pips to be made, and all I'm trying to do is assure myself of five pips, and. Um, so everything I do is geared to try to get not to the 25 because I don't think that even though the position is offering maybe 25 uh, pips, I, I'll be lucky to get 13. That's my, that's my desire. And then <clears throat> if the position goes beyond that 13 and I'm going to let it go beyond 13, I mean, it gets 13 pips and I got to pull everything off. I position manage. And so, uh, it's a very simple process that, that I that I teach, and a lot of it is instincts and, and, and stuff, and you you know you have to convey that to somebody and be sure they understand that. And I'm willing to take the risk in working with somebody that they understand the difference between mechanics and um, uh, mechanics and just uh, riding by the seat of your pants. And, and, and it isn't so much that you, um, I don't know, ride by the seat of your pants, is that it's, um, it's that instinct, it's that, it's that gut feel that shows you to do the right thing. Um, and I think what, what needs to happen uh, in my own world is to re-look at... Um, the blend that comes in between position management and actually having a process of staging out of a position, mainly to say, look, I run the bell, I got some profit, I've moved my stop up, if it goes completely to shit against me, 
I've made this little tiny amount. Well, I'm really only looking, my focus was only really looking at making that tiny amount to start with. Five pips on a thousand is, a, is five bucks. It, 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 there's such a fine line uh, between a, a mechanical system and, 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 and trading uh, instinctively based on the information that you have. And I think that's uh, where I'm bridging between um, staging out as a thing as opposed to position management, which is a process. And I think I got stuck on not doing the staging out because staging in is just, that's just not the way to go. Now, if you're trading um, pretty large size and you're doing a little bit longer term trading, you might want to dribble in with uh, uh, two or three lots um, in case it runs against you, then you're going to lose uh, 10 or 20 pips on the three lots instead of staging in your, dropping in your whole 10 lot position you know, up front, you might want to do something like that. But dribbling, staging in lots just to stage them in for safety's sake, that's just, that doesn't work out. From, that, that doesn't work at all. Um, and so uh, as my discussion is going here, you know, bring up my cup of coffee. Uh, cheers to Langers if he watches this uh, uh, video. Because you can't trade without having some coffee. You can't talk about trading without having some coffee. Okay. So one of the other differentials, I think, between myself and how Langers and the Scruffy Trader uh, are sort of coming into this and looking at it, he's been doing it uh, for 20 years. I've been studying this stuff only since 2007 and only actively trading in a real account to get my balls broke uh, since about 2017. I had a couple of mini accounts before that back in 2012, but geez, you know, <laughs> just, that, <laughs> that was like a cartoon. So, um, but what, what Langers has been able to accomplish for himself is what he calls, he pays himself a wage. He sits and trades every day and he makes two or three hundred dollars on average uh, and he does that consistently. There's a consistent profit making process that he, that he goes by. And, and I think that's a, a, a different view as to how I came into it with my real estate background where um, you put a lot of money up front on a piece of property because it's the right decision and you run that thing out to get the profit out that you see is going to be the profit. Um, when you're looking at a trade, I tried to look at that the same way. Trading is trading, whether you're trading real estate, currencies, or old tires. Doesn't make any difference. It's trading. It's for sale. It's the time differential uh, that's important, not the evaluation of value in any of this stuff. That's all the same. But it's it's the time that becomes uh, the differential. So in all of my uh, educational pursuits, and all of my simulation analysis that I did for, on a computer and my actual trading is based on who I am and what my personality is. I can't sit there and watch a trade go for five days. Like, oh, that would drive me crazy. I want to trade. That's, that's what I'm here for. I'm a, I'm a boat. I'm built to go out beyond the breakwater. Not to, not to sit there for months on end hoping that I'm going to get my 300 pips or 400 pips <clears throat> out of a trade and I'm taking a 200 pip risk. I just don't like that risk spread out. You know, if I'm gonna drive my car, if I'm gonna pull my car out of the driveway to go to the store, and you know, I'm gonna put my seatbelt on because I'm gonna go a long distance, but if I'm just backing the car out of the driveway so the snow plow can get in there and push some snow around, then I'm gonna pull back in, I'm probably not gonna put that seatbelt on because the greater the time you're exposed, to a danger, uh, the more importance has to be weighed to those protective considerations. 
And so I didn't want to have to worry about all that stuff. I don't have to worry about whether the Fed is going to raise interest rates or all that bullshit. I want to be flat at the end of the day. I want to put my trades on and be out. And Langer's is the same way. He, he, he's, he's, he's goes in and he wants to be flat at the end of the day. His trades, and he trades very similar to, to, to what I do. He's not going to take a trade unless there's 25 or 30 pips to be had from that trade. He's not looking to get that whole 25 or 30 pips with this whole stack. He's going to stage out of it, and then if the rest of it goes, let it run. I'm going to do the same thing. I'm not going to go into a trade unless I've got 25 or 30 pips that, that's being offered, and then I want to be sure that I lock in that 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 five pips, that that 0.5 percent, a half a percent. If I can do a half a percent a day, boys and girls, five days a week or just four days a week, that's two percent a week, eight percent a month. That's 80 percent a year. If I take two months off, man, I'm telling you, you just can't get money like that. Um, but what I'm trying to do is again, I said that what Langers is doing is, and he and he talks about this in every video. He trades for a wage. And, and so you can trade for a wage or you can do what I do is I trade for net worth enhancement. I'm not looking for a wage. I've got my, I've got my money. I worked as a software engineer. I did all this stuff. And so I didn't need the trading to be a wage. I needed it to add to my net worth. So my thinking as far as being paid for the risk that I take is very, very much, I'm going to go all in, and then at the end, I'm going to come all out. It's the same way. That's, I became a millionaire in real estate by thinking that way. I, I'm not a flipper. I don't believe in that. You flip, 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 flip. Yeah, you make a lot of money until, you know, I mean, I've got friends that... Uh, uh, that have done uh, flipping and uh, you know, I, I hope they work if everything worked out okay But the more money that you have the more Flips that you try to do at the same time until all of a sudden the music stops and there's no chairs for people to buy This stuff and you get and you get stuck with it. I mean, that's what happens Because you don't get good as a flipper in, in two or three years It takes you five or ten years and then you're really ripping through this stuff and everything is going great and you got a lot of money out there and all of a sudden <laughs> you get an economic collapse. It happens about every 10 years. Go back boys and girls into the study. About every 10 years we all get flushed out. So um, that wasn't my that wasn't my thinking. I'm smarter than that. I want to I want to be able to control my risk because I, I've always known that the only thing I can control is my risk. I don't have any control over how much money I'm going to make, but I have control over my risk. And so with real estate, the time frame is so expanded out when you're a buy and hold investor as opposed to being a flipper. So that's why I took the buy and hold. Very infrequently did I sell. Um, and it worked out great. Okay, so I retired from that. But I wasn't looking for a wage for my real estate. I was looking for a net worth enhancement. I was making my wage through my income and stuff. Okay, so now I'm retired. I've got my 401k, which is now an IRA. I've got Social Security. Um, and I've got uh, money that's just, it, is, it isn't in the IRA. It's savings from the sale of these properties and I'm doing fine. I have my wage. So in my trading, my trading just never changed from real estate thought to currency trading. So I don't need to trade for a wage in currencies. I'm looking for a way while I am mentally strong in order to build my net worth, to build the cash that, that, that I have in order that if something were to happen to me, I would have more money to be able to mitigate those those things. I mean, look, um, you go into a nursing home, you're looking at eighty thousand bucks a year, ninety thousand bucks a year. Man, that's that's just a lot of money. So um, and I don't have long term care insurance because I took all that money from those premiums that I would have paid for that and put that into real estate. I have the buffer to be able to survive that if I went into long-term care. 
And, you know, I'm healthy, so the bet is I will last long enough that if I get sick enough that I go into long-term care, that, you know, that's the end of the road anyway. I'm not going to come out of long-term care. Um, but let's say I just got sick for a while and came out and, and was faced with tremendous expenses from that. You know, medical expenses are just that net worth crusher of so many, so many people. There's so many sad stories about that. You have to be prepared for that. So you need as much cash as you can have. And other than that, it's just fun to be able to increase your net worth, to see that net worth increasing um, on a monthly basis through your efforts, through passive income, uh, adding to that net worth, so that you know you decide you want to do a big purchase, like you want to move or something. You know, I was very fortunate when when I retired and decided to to um, to, to make the move. I, I could pay cash for the house that I was moving into, and then I could sell my other house that we were moving out of when I when I got the price that I wanted. I didn't have people come in and they lowball offer me. I got get the fuck out of here. I don't need to sell. <laughs> I've got I got fuck you money. So fuck you. Go away. Pay me the price that I want, or go away. And uh, you know that's kind of a crass way to look at it. But look, when you work really hard, and you have things that you've worked hard for, you're not going to give that shit up to some somebody that's just looking for a deal. You want a deal? Go down to Kmart. They're out of business. Well, whatever. Long story. But the difference in my attitude here uh, has always been not to rely on trading income or real estate income to live on. Uh, they were to build my net worth. You know, when I, was, um, when I was working as a software engineer and I had real estate, I was making enough money off of my real estate uh, to almost pay the salary that I was making. I could have retired, oh man, probably eight years before I did and lived on, on, on that money. But I really enjoyed um, software engineering and it was a great way to enhance my net worth because I was building this cash reserve up in, in, uh, in, in, in the, from the property income. And so that's the way I consider the, the, the money that I want to make from trading. I'm, I'm not, I'm not going to be looking to make three or four or five hundred bucks a day from my trading or a thousand bucks a day so that I can go to Costa Rica and spend that or buy a freaking Lamborghini or stupid shit that these fuckers are all doing. Uh, I'm, I'm not looking at, 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 um, at, at make, I don't need to make a wage from it. I'm doing fine the way I am. I haven't made any money from my trading anyway because I lost that large amount because I listened to these other people and without taking an objective view of really what needed to go on here because of the time differential. I got screwed up because of the time differential. I'm not screwed up about it now. But what I, because of the way that Langers presented in his video um, the, the rationale of staging out, that's just not staging out for a wage. That's staging out to ensure that your net worth is constantly increasing on a daily value. And if you happen to get the full swing uh, that you're looking for, the 25 pips or go, maybe then you'll go to 50 pips or 100 pips. You can ride that fucker for weeks if you wanted to. As long as it's paying you money, you, you don't get out of the trade, right? But if you've got a lot at stack, stake, here's something that I just thought of today. As, you're, as I'm riding through with these positions that will be larger when I refund my, my, my trading account with, <clears throat> with a larger amount of money when I sell this next building, um, yeah, the thing is moving in your direction and you're showing uh, 20 pip profit, 30 pip profit on this large position, which could be, you know, three, four thousand dollars, eight thousand, six thousand dollars. Uh, you're going, oh man, uh, when that thing turns against me five or ten pips, you know, instead of uh, six thousand dollars, and now I'm four thousand dollars ahead, and I'm going, holy shit, I've lost, you know, two thousand dollars or pips or whatever it is. 
So you become more emotionally attached to the profit that you don't have because it's just paper until you cash it out. And so that, that, that's going to create stress. I don't have any stress in my trading when, I, when I'm doing short-term stuff. But when I had larger positions that were running in my favor, I would have angst. I would, as Jane Austen would say, I'd be vexed <laughs> over losing any of that. And it was that fear-greed thing that was working against me at that particular time. And so here's a, 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 a toast of coffee to Langer's the scruffy trader for waking my dumb ass up into looking at this, this staging out thing just a little bit differently and I'm going to rethink this and, 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 and try to work through uh, how I could incorporate that into my own, my own uh, particular trading process. It's a little hard right now uh, because I'm just working off a $1,000 uh, mini account. And I'm really not a fan of, 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 of mini lots, um, breaking those up into, any, into, into micro lots. Um, it's a buck a pip. That's as far down as I want to go. I don't want to be trading for 50 cents a, 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 a point or 25 cents a point. Uh, it's a buck a point. That's as low down as I'm thinking. Because if I lose uh, 30 bucks, that's a, that's a pizza. Now, that's not a really big deal, but it's still a pizza that I can't have, and so that's going to that's gonna hurt. Um, so while I'm just trading and working out some of the of the um, processes methodologies that I have in and in, uh, in my trading with a, with a one thousand dollar account I'm not going to stage out of that but when I get into my larger account I may mean, open up a, uh, open back up my sim account and go in there with a larger amount of money and try that out um, from my but you know what I don't need to try it out I, 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 you know, a degree in physics and mathematics and stuff, I know I can look at the math behind the thing and I can say, well, yes, from a theoretical standpoint, that's right. As long as you can take that little secret sauce in it and not get embroiled in, in your greed or do stupid shit. Let, 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 expect too much from your trade and not take defensive measures about that. Anyway, Langers, thanks. I'll catch you on an email uh, at some point. Peter Rose, Longwood Currency Trading. Have a great day. Have a great trading day.